Hi everyone, and welcome to ENG 1100 Workshop in Essay Writing. Today, um, I'm going to be giving you uh, maybe a 30 minute lecture, and we'll simply go through the course outline. That's all we're gonna do. In lecture two, we will start to get into a crash course in grammar and a whole lot of other stuff. But I figured today, because this is an online course, and you know things are, are a bit different than, than normal, I thought we would just slowly get into the course show you all of the requirements, give you some hints on you know, where you can go to find information and things like that, all right? And I think that's probably the best way to start. Uh, then, as I said, when I send you then the link to uh, week two, okay, or I should say lecture two, it's probably better to say it that way during these times, then, um, th as I said, then we'll get into you know, the, the, the actual writing process, okay? And so, by now, I've sent you the, uh, the, the course outline, uh, and I've sent you some notes as well, okay? And so, um, a few things that we should talk about at this point. Now, I will use Brightspace, okay, just, just in general, but not for very much. Instead, what I think, what I think works better is if I simply send you direct links to the lectures, to class notes, and things like that. But like I said, there'll be maybe a couple of things that I will post that will also be included in the class notes, just in case you lose something or you know you you misfile something. Uh, but as I said, the, the 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 majority of the information will be sent directly to you. I've taught I should say that I've taught online courses for many many years, and so I find that that is the best method. Okay, so better than you going and searching for stuff, I'll simply send it to you. But there will be, like I said, there'll be maybe four or five things that I will post uh, or have already posted at Brightspace. Okay, but but you'll get them anyway. Well, all right, are we clear on that? Okay, and so and the first thing obviously will be the course outline. So you'll find that at Brightspace, but you've already got it because, like I said, I sent I sent it to you as a link. Okay, so let's go through the course outline then very very quickly. All right, like I said, half an hour at the most. And the course is online, and so that means obviously you'll be doing it at home. Uh, but I will be sending you email like like quite constantly. All right, <clears throat> I'll I'll make sure that you guys are in contact. Like I'm in contact with you, that you have the information you need. Questions will arise. There will be questions throughout the course, right? And so I'll try and anticipate those questions for you as we go through. Right. As I said, I've already done this a couple of times. Right. I'm making a new first lecture for for this class in particular, but we, we've already been through this already. And so I've already anticipated many of the questions you will have. So hold off. Don't don't worry about emailing me about stuff in you know, week 10 or what have you. All right. Like we'll get to everything as we go along. OK. All right. So my name is Professor Gilday and uh, I will be running DGD one. Now, what do we mean by that? When you signed up for this course, okay, not only did you sign up for the course, but you also signed up for a DGD, which means discussion group, okay? And so, if you are in DGD1, please, please make a note of this right now, all right? Because this causes a whole lot of confusion for some reason. I don't know why. If you are in DGD1, you will send all of your assignments to me, myself, at the email that I provided. If you are in DGD2, well then, you will send your assignments to the TA. And I've given you both email addresses there. I'm being generic now, all right, because I don't want to be specific. Right? Like, basically, make a point of that. If you are in DGD2, you are not sending your assignments to me. You're sending them to the TA. And you have the TA's email address right there on the first page, almost you know, almost one of the very few, very first things in the course outline. So please, what I found is the administration for this course takes up more time than the actual teaching and and correcting. I'm not kidding. All right. So please don't make mistakes like that. All right. So DGD one send to my address. DGD two send to the TA's address. Okay. All right. Now, you'll notice as well, office hours, and I have to be announced. In other words, who knows? Who knows? While we are teaching online, we, we, we don't have access to the campus, okay? And so, uh, at the moment, right, these things are all up in the air. But, but there may come a time down the road, right, where maybe, you know, things loosen up. So, I'll, again, I'll email you about that as we move along. Things are, things are very fluid at the moment, as I'm sure you're all aware. All right? Okay. 
and then my office uh, number well I'm in Hamlin 315 but again who like like who knows who knows now suggested texts okay the books for the course you do not have to buy anything for this course okay your tuition is already <laughs> way too expensive all right so you do not have to buy anything for this course okay also yes I need a haircut I know I've, I've been I've been following protocol if you know what I mean all right okay uh, and you'll notice that with the lectures that are about to come as well so you don't have to buy anything for this course I'm gonna send you everything you need everything everything so again no email anticipating well do I have to do this and do I no no don't worry about it I'll take care of everything okay all right the only reason why I have these two suggested texts there if you look at the first one the Canadian practical stylist later on in the course outline I'll be mentioning chapters chapter 12 chapter 13 I'm simply referring to the, the, the Canadian practical stylist that's simply where I took much of the information all right um, and then the second one is just it's a writing reference there are thousands of books like that out there if you have you know uh, the, the the oh god I can't even think of titles off my head now like I said literally there are thousands out there all of those are fine the only thing is if you have a reference text that you are using okay I, I'm gonna show you how to avoid stuff like that anyway as we get through the lecture but if you are make sure it's up to date and the reason for that of course is electronic writing the, the writing in the, in the in the in the age of electronics okay so so many of those kinds of books are out of date now so like I said don't buy them okay but they are there suggested simply because I am taking some of the information from those two all right I hope that I hope that's clear that, that wasn't actually was it? it was a bit vague but all I'm saying is as I said I'm gonna send you everything you need all right okay so let's not worry about that and again let's slow down on that don't email me you know tomorrow saying well what like why haven't you sent her I'll take care of it okay now the objectives of the course well obviously uh, this is a writing course so I'm going to give you the skills okay that are necessary for producing an academic paper at the university level right I mean like I don't know <laughs> how much more specific I need to be on that right now the one thing though that I am going to uh, that I'm going to stress we're going to look a lot not necessarily at content I, like, like many of us get really we get uptight and we get like, preoccupied with the content of our paper well that only works for each individual paper what you want to be more interested in especially at the first year okay let's forget about high school now at the first year of university you want to be thinking more about organization if you can organize one paper properly you can organize any paper properly so we want we want to start thinking now about moving away from content necessarily you'll see that on the first on the very first essay you'll you'll see what I mean we want to move away from like being content oriented and being more organizational or structured uh, oriented so that's that and that's really important all right now of course later on when it comes to choosing the, the proper topic or what have you yeah of course that will be important but let's begin at the beginning so structure that's where we're going to begin with in this course well I shouldn't say begin with well, I'm going to talk about grammar and stuff like that which also follows into structure so let's not worry too much about content just yet okay all right there's other things we want to think about good all right and so and by the time you're done of course then we'll be interested in content we'll be interested in you know we'll, like 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 what information are you providing are you providing it correctly is it logical and all that we'll get to all of that too but notice what I just said there logic also is connected to organization isn't it right so so that's where we're heading that's where we're heading now methodology okay so I'm still on page one you're following along with me I hope we're on page one here so each lecture will consist of two components I'm going to provide a lecture as I'm doing right now literally I I'm literally posting things at YouTube all right and I will send you the YouTube link but then I will also send you the class notes so you can follow along so interestingly enough the even though it's online it will the, the note taking will be a breeze because all you'll really have to do when you're actually taking your notes there might be a few cryptic things that you add right to the notes that I provided things that you want to highlight and, and remind yourself of or whatever right but I'm providing you with almost everything you need so okay uh, that, that's basically how we will go about it and so 
The notes and the lectures will be on writing methods, okay? I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. Then uh, grammar, okay? And again, don't worry about the grammar too much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you grammar in a way that you've never been taught before, all right? I'm going to show you the sense of grammar rather than the rules of grammar, okay? Uh, and, and again, I, th I think you'll understand when, when we get to that in the next lecture, right? Uh, instead of just telling you about, you know, certain rules that apply, I'm going to show you how they work, okay? Why they apply. Okay, words like however, okay, which is one of the biggest style records in all of English, okay, and, you, and you'll see, you might think I'm joking, but you'll see, I'll show you how that stuff works, all right, however, furthermore, therefore, words like that, all right, so we'll get to all of that, and then as I said, just to, I'm just following along now with the, the outline, there will be a few things posted at Brightspace, but as I said, I think it's better if I just actually send them right out to you so you have them. Uh, so let me repeat, you don't have to go looking for stuff, I'll send it to you. That's the best way to do an online course, in my opinion. I, and I've, like I said, I've done this for over 30 years, okay, at different universities. Um, not just not just because of, of what's happening right now, but some of you may be aware of CUTV over at Carleton, right? I, I, I do those courses all the time, okay? So, so like I said, I've, I've been through it, not to worry. I'll, I'll get you through it, all right? And then, yeah, and at the end of the first page, like I said, anything else, extra, whatever, you know, as, as, it, as we get to it, I'll send it out to you as well. So now let's talk about your grading. The grading structure itself, very straightforward. You'll have two quizzes, and obviously you don't know what those quizzes are about just yet. Well, we're going to get to all of that, all right? But the quiz component, just so, just so you understand or you can anticipate where we're going, the quiz component, I'll send you 10 sentences. All right, and the sentences may have problems, they may not, right? And you simply have to correct the sentences and then you send them back to me. That's it, that's it. So, and there'll be two of them, each worth five, 5% 5 of your final grade. Now, let's talk about that right now, okay? Everything that you do for this course must be sent back as a word attachment. So, do not send your stuff to, Bright, uh, stuff to Brightspace. Don't give me Google Docs, whatever. Send it back to myself or to the TA as a word attachment. Please make a note of that right now, right? It's much easier to manipulate word attachments than it is other documents. And so do not send PDFs, okay? As I said, word attachment. So that'll be true for your quizzes. It'll be true for your essays, okay? And then the final exam, which you will be writing, all right? And so, so please make a note of that, all right? All right. And uh, that's going to be clear as well when we start to get into the week by week. So, you'll have two quizzes, each worth five. Then uh, you'll do an example essay. It's the, that's the easiest essay that you can do. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, we'll get to it. I'll explain. It's, it's partly explained in the course outline, as a matter of fact. But I'll give you a whole lecture on that. Right? So, that's our first one. And three pages. Huh? Right? But, I mean, we're not looking for much. Remember, I'm trying to show you how to put a paper together in this course, right? Not, not. I, I don't want you to do 25-page papers, right? Like, what, once you can do a three-page paper, you can do a 25-page paper, as long as you follow what, I'm about, what, what we're going to do in this course. So we'll do an example essay, very straightforward. Then we'll do what's known as a causal analysis or something, or, or also known as a cause and effect essay. And again, I'll take you through it. It's not, not, not very difficult. And then we'll have a final essay, which basically you'll put everything together that we've, we've looked at on the course, right? And it will be the culmination, basically, of the course. And then there will be a final examination. So just to be clear, right, uh, there was some talk about, you know, whether there would be, wouldn't be, whatever, because of, of what happened recently with COVID and all that. There will be a final exam for this course. So don't email. There's, there's the, you know, the information you need right there. And that, and there it is. It adds up to 100%. Okay, and so let's talk about something right now. When you hand in a paper, this is really important because I, I noticed this the last time around. When you hand in a paper, you do not start at 100 and then have marks taken off. It doesn't work that way. I don't know why some students think that's the way marking works. No, it's almost the opposite. All right. So at the end of this 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 outline and this lecture. I'm going to show you what is an A, a B, a C, and a D. So don't think, don't email either myself or the TA asking, where did I lose marks? It, it doesn't work that way. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm glad I remember that actually because because as I said, there were there were two or three students last time around who just kept asking that question. It's like no, it, 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 you don't start at a hundred. Okay, all right. I'm sure most of you understand exactly what I'm talking about. All right, okay. Now. Um, Let's do a couple more things, and then, I'm, like I said, I might pause just for a second just to make sure everything is, is working. It's the first time that we've talked, right? So I just want to make sure everything's fine. Um, let's look at number five. Oh, and that's the other thing, by the way. This outline looks a bit odd, right? The way I have one, two, three, four, and five. I'm simply trying to make sure that I, 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 like I give you everything you need in this lecture to get you ready. N normally, I wouldn't have those numbers there at all, all right? And so we've looked at four components. Now we're into the fifth. All right. Important notes to consider. Now, a few of these things, they kind of apply in, in these times. OK, I, I might say that a few times throughout the course in these times. All right. So some of them may apply and some of them may not. But obviously. All right. Let's look at. Um, well, let's look at the second one under number five. OK. Rewriting of assignments is not permitted. That is not my rule. That is a department rule. OK. Or I should say it's a faculty rule. Faculty of Arts. So please, if you do not do very well on your first paper, you do not email myself or the TA asking, well, can I, can I do that over? No, you can't. On the other hand, and this is really important for this course, if we see development, right? If we see development in your writing throughout the, the term and you end up with, say, a 68, we'll give you the B, right? We'll give you the 70. That's the whole point. So I think that's really important to stress in, in the first lecture, okay? Do not, do not be badgering myself or the TA about grades. The idea is to learn. Writing is a process. Many of you have not been taught at all how to put a paper together in high school. I, I, I know that for a fact. I've been doing this for over 30 years, all right? You haven't been taught that. That's what I'm going to teach you. So if you don't do so well on the first paper, fine, fine. Let's say all of a sudden you improve on the second. Then you improve even more on the third. We will take that into consideration for your final grade. So, no discussion about grades on the course, okay? At least to begin with. We want to learn the process and improve, okay? All right? Just, just want to be clear about that. All right? All right. So, no rewriting. Now, uh, all in all that your, your assignments must be completed obviously to earn credit for the course and the, that's a that's a weird one right but if you think about it if you only needed this credit and you ended up with 51 going into the final exam if you already built up enough <laughs> points to have 51 then you would think to yourself well I've already passed so, no it doesn't work that way you must complete everything to earn a credit right including the final exam obviously now this next thing, right, this is the one thing that, that, that confuses people. There's two aspects I have to talk about here, and it's in number, uh, sorry, um, at the end of number five, all right? And I, I just jumped ahead of myself here. All assignments, okay, must be as word attachments. I already said that, I know. I just want to make sure everyone understands that and it's nice and clear, okay? And on the assigned dates, which I'll, I'll talk about in general, okay, in just a second, right? So we're not quite there yet in the course outline. All right. Now, number six. This is the one that I want to make clear. I want to make sure everybody understands this. If your paper is late, let's just say something happens and you can't hand in a paper on time. For the first two papers, right, you may hand the, the papers in two days after the due date. All right. Okay. But you will receive no comments. There will be no grade penalty. I'm going to say that again, just so that you don't email me saying, did you mean that? Okay, so let's just say you can't get your first paper in on time or your second paper or whatever. You are allowed to hand it in two days after the due date, but your paper will receive no comments. It will also, okay, receive no grade penalty. You'll get the same grade you would have anyway, but you simply won't get feedback. So this is my strong recommendation, okay, for your for the course. Get the first paper in on time so that you get the feedback you need to understand what you need to work on. Don't know if I can be any clearer. All right. 
And that's usually what happens because in, 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 a, in, in courses like these, right, it's easy to fall behind, right? You've got a lecture to watch, but, you know, like, as opposed to just going to class, it's easy to fall behind in an online course. Things will come up. So as I said, let's say the last time, right, and then I might even almost take a pause here. We're 20 minutes in and it's taken a bit longer than I thought um, because I have much more I want to do. So understand that. Okay, you have an extension already. Okay, first two papers, okay, two extra days, but no comments. Now at the end of the course, the, the extension date will be a few days longer. I purposely did that simply because, right, the, the, there may be other things going on in your life in, in, with school. And so no, whenever I mention any date in a lecture, Okay, if let's just say I misspeak and I say a wrong, like an incorrect date, follow the course outline, follow the course outline. I'm going to say that again okay, later on. So whatever dates are in the course outline, that's what you want to follow. You have to keep in mind that because I taped this earlier, like before we actually started the course, I might have mentioned, you know, a date here or there. I don't think I did, but I might have here or there. And you might be thinking, well, on the on the course outline, is it whatever it says on the course outline, that's what you want. And by the way, don't worry too much about that anyway, because I will be updating you with email. I'll be reminding you, okay? Paper is due, you know, two days from now or whatever. Okay, so we'll get to that as well. Yeah. Not we won't get to, what I mean is that will happen down the road. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I mean, if you if you honestly need an, like like a medical extension or what have you, that's all covered in, in the course outline as well. But you must have documentation from University Health Services, okay? I, I, again, I, I, I probably shouldn't have even said that. I, I'm going to be more lenient than usual when it comes to things like that. All right. So, as I said, now keep all of your work, right? Anything that you have that you like, anything that is sent back to you, hang on to it. Don't just throw it out. At the end of the year, mistakes can happen. This has happened before where I might put the wrong grade into the wrong box. Like if, when I'm looking at a, a, a list of 70 students, it's very possible that can happen. So it, 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 I don't know if it's ever happened, you know, with Ottawa U, with me, but it can. It, the, the possibility is there. Hang on to everything just in case. Okay, just in case, just in case. And then, like I said, if a mistake is made, no problem. We can sort it out, fix it, right? And so, yeah. So, yeah, let me just take a quick break here. We're only on page two, but but I'm not going to be doing a lot more, but maybe another 20 minutes. So it may, we might go 40 minutes. I just want to make sure I've got everything laid out uh, um, just for the, the purposes of the first course. OK, or the first lecture, I should say. Just give me one second. I'll be right back. All right. So on the subject of documentation. All right. So we're still on page two. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through this quite quickly for the, the rest. But on the, the subject of documentation, uh, APA, MLA, right? If you don't know what those things mean, um, American Psychological Association or Modern Language Association, don't worry about it. That's my job to teach you what those things mean. OK, but those are mandatory. I, I guess you could also use Chicago. I don't know why we still use Chicago. But the best thing to do is to find out what is what is the, the 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 primary style that is used in your discipline, and whatever primary style that is, that's the one you should be using for this course. All right. In the social sciences, you'll be doing APA. If you happen to be more in the arts, you'll be using MLA. Right. I'm trying to think now for Chicago. I think it's more uh, political science. I think maybe history. I'm not sure because things change. Right. But but uh, anyway, so so as I said, I'm not asking you to use any style in particular. Use the one that you will need for the rest of your university career. That would make the most sense. Right. And so um, and, and so here's something we need to talk about. There's a thousand different questions you can you could ask us as we go through the course on documentation. We do not have the answers, you know, at, like at the top of our heads. OK, but. Anytime you do have a more sophisticated question than what I am going to provide you, I am going to show you how to document, obviously, right? But let's just say you have a really sophisticated question, something that, that you know, well, then there is the site to go to. At any search engine, type in OWL, whoo, 
Who? Okay, owl at Purdue. Purdue University is in Indiana, and it is the, and, and the site that I'm talking about is the, the best in the world for documentation. The only problem with OWL is it is so sophisticated that there's, there's a lot to work through. Like you, you have to be a bit patient as you go through the material, but any questions you have, they will answer. I guarantee. All right. I use it all the time, all the time, because as I said, things change. Like, like, think about it. Electronic writing. When I say electronic writing, what I mean is like, like taking stuff, off, like journal materials off of a university database without actually going into the university. Well, that's relatively new, right? Relatively. And, and so we have to then adjust to how do we document stuff like that? And again, I'm going to show you all that. Okay. Down the road, down the road, baby steps, baby steps. Okay. We're going to go, we're going to move slowly in this course to begin with, right? You'll see, you'll see. Okay. So, um, Academic dis, uh, dishonesty, I don't want to talk about that. And I'm, I, I'm half joking. Some of you will end up plagiarizing in this course and not even know it. Unless you've been shown these things, right? Well, then how are you supposed to know? So I would argue that you you won't purposely, um, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to be very careful with my language here. You won't purposely plagiarize, okay? But there's going to be a heck of a lot of paraphrasing. And that's where things get a bit blurry. Don't email me about that, all right? Again, we'll get to it. I understand if you're in the social sciences, especially case studies and all that. Yes, I know, we'll get to it, but we'll talk about it as well. And so do be aware though of what academic dishonesty means. And I think most of you do know it, but just take a look at, at top of page three where I say plagiarism examples. Just be aware of it, all right? Just be aware of it, right? And again, but we'll talk about it, but we'll talk about it. I don't wanna spend time on that today. All right, internet sources. Wikipedia is a great place to start. It is a horrible place to finish. I actually have an article, okay? I, I could send it to you, but the founder of Wikipedia wrote an essay pleading, pleading with university students not to use his website, okay? So what do I mean when I say, well, it's a good place to start, but, but not a good place to end. When you go to Wikipedia, for instance, you might start to see names that pop up, okay, that, that keep popping up with a certain discipline, with, with a certain topic. Okay, well, then what you want to do is maybe go to the university database. And again, I'm going to send you a file on that. You go to the inter and maybe you type in that name and then you start to get academic writing, okay, from that person. That's kind of the way research works. And again, we'll we'll get to all of that, all right? I don't want to do too much today, right? We'll, we'll, I'm going to, every question you have, we will get to, all right? On the first essay, and this is all in the course outline, on the first essay, feel free to use whatever you want, okay? If you want to use, you know, Sports Illustrated, TSN, um, um, <laughs> Chatelaine, whatever, all right, whatever. If you want to go to websites like that for the first paper, feel free, feel free. We're going to have fun with the first paper. But as we move along, so remember what I said earlier on, we're, more, we're worried more about organization and structure in the first paper than we are content. So feel free to use whatever you want. And don't email me asking, how do I document this? How do I... Don't worry about it, right? For the first paper, don't worry about it. Just do your best. We'll get to all of that. As we move into the second paper, then I'm gonna wean you off of stuff like that. And by the time we get to the final paper, you won't be using anything like that at all. But for the first paper, let's have a bit of fun simply because there's too many other things that we need to worry about. Okay, I hope I'm, I hope I'm being clear on that. So as I said, internet sources, and I hope you'll read a few of the things that I have here in the outline as well, right? that you will be, by the end of the course, okay, you will know how to learn, you know, how to find material properly, library databases, all of that. As I said, I'm gonna send you a file on that, all right? And so, um, yeah, and then, and you'll also then understand how to put the, the work cited together or references. And again, if these terms don't, if you don't understand what I'm talking about right now, again, that's part of this course. I'll show you how to do it. So the whole, the whole idea is, right, by the end of the course, you'll know how to do an academic paper, okay? My job to show you that. And so, number seven, I'm on page three, but I'm all, we're almost done. I mean, maybe another 15, 20 minutes. It's gonna go, like I said, a bit longer. 
So I'll send you the notes and the lectures as we progress. And quite, quite often what I'll do is I, I, I'll, I'll send you the notes and the lectures before the actual date. Like I'll give you lots of time, right? Again, I've anticipated all these things. Don't worry, you, you'll have plenty of time to do everything, all right? And then um, I'm not quite sure what else I need to say there. Yeah, so obviously don't send me an email, please, asking, can we meet to discuss my paper? Well, technically, no, <laughs> at the moment. Like I said, though, things might change. And if they change, then I will send you an email saying, all right, now, you know, here, here's the new situation. Okay. All right. Now, at the bottom of page three, top of page four, I go through everything we're going to do. And so you'll notice that I don't have due dates. Uh, sorry, that I don't have dates for the lectures, right? Instead, it's like lecture one, two, three, four, because time has kind of, right, it, it kind of stood still in, in a weird way, right? Every day seems to be the same. And so I've given you everything you need, including due dates and all of that. And like I said, I'll send you reminders. So when I, when I see that something is coming due, right, don't forget, whatever. And so you'll be hearing from me quite a bit. Right, in terms of email. And um, I will send you readings. So anything anything there that, you know, that, that it, it looks like, well, what am I supposed to be reading or where do I find that? I'm going to send. Normally, I would put those things on. No, sorry. Normally, I would create a, a course pack you would have to buy and all that. But again, I mean, you're not supposed to go to campus. So I'll send, I'm going to send everything to you. Right. Just take a look at the very first one there. Reading, co-opting, co-opting dissent. Don't worry. In the first set of notes I send, it will be included. Okay, good, clear? Yes, clear. And then I have your due dates, all right? And notice word attachment once again, right? I'm trying to remind you and then, you know, sent in at a specific time and all of that. And so that's that's the whole page there because, <laughs> like, as I'm, I don't even know how to finish that sentence. There's no point in going through everything we're going to do because we're going to do it. So, uh, yeah. So make sure you keep a copy of uh, page four handy. Um, just, just it gives you an idea of how we're going to go through things. All right. So you'll notice we start with a bit of crash course in grammar. Then we do the thesis and some structure. Para like in, in, other, in other words, we're going to build. We're going to build as we go along. Okay. All right. Believe me, I've, I've done this so many times. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. All right. But, but as I said, just be aware. Be aware of the expectations. Okay. Covered in the outline. And so, as I said, then uh, I'm on page five now. I'm not going to do much with this. Make a note. If you have a pen handy right now, this is something I'm a stickler on this. Minimum requirements for all essays. I'm not even going to go through it. Minimum. Minimum requirements. If you can't meet the minimum requirements, okay, you're not going to do very well. E even if your essay is brilliant, okay, because part of doing an academic paper is putting it together properly. So, your essay will be, I'm, I'm going to do a couple with you, will be typed on one side of the paper. That's it. Double spaced, proper margins. That, that's what I've noticed is a real, real pain. Okay, so make sure you have proper margins. Okay, when I say proper margin, I mean one inch, one inch around everywhere. So that, so that your last line of your essay is not at the bottom of the page. That's one thing for some reason I've noticed quite a bit. Okay, so just make sure you have proper one inch margins. And then, and notice I bolded it times New Roman 12. Now, in your essays, I'm going to be doing this in the lectures. In your essays, there should be no bolding anywhere. Anywhere. All right? Okay? Everything should be times New Roman 12 from the very beginning to the end of your, what we call now a works cited or a reference sheet. All right? So no bolding. Please. I'm, I'm, I, I, Sorry, I'm, I'm still creating. I'm still marking papers, right? For for the previous course I was doing, bolding everywhere. Don't do that. You lose marks. Part of the course is to show you how to put it together, put a paper together, right? And so yes, you lose marks when it comes to formatting. Okay, so keep that in mind. No bold anywhere, anywhere. All right. 
And then uh, 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 I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go through all that. I'm going to post on Brightspace the a first page sample of what a first page of an MLA looks like and a first page of what an APA looks like. And then all you have to do is follow that. So quickly, uh, APA has a title page, right? Whereas MLA does not. And again, if you don't really understand that, don't worry about it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. And so the one last thing then, yes, regardless of what style you're using, just be consistent. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that in the lectures. I was about to give an example there, but I will get into it in the lectures. And so then for the rest of the outline, there isn't much else to talk about. I've got some topics, right, for your essays. Each, each different essay has topics, but always feel free to develop topics on your own. Always feel free to do that. In the lectures, as I said, when we get into the, I'll talk about the, the topics and I'll talk about, you know, different ways to go about it. As I said, lots of time, lots of time to do stuff. Um, and then, yeah, papers, three to four pages, okay, around there, double spaced. And I'm, I'm quickly going through the material now, right? And then, yeah, so three to four pages again. And then maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit longer for the final paper, right? Um, but again, four, four and a half, that, that, that's fine. That's fine. Again, remember, once you once you finish this course, I will show you if you can put, I'm, I know I'm repeating myself, if you can put a four-page paper together, okay? If you do it properly, you can do a 40-page paper together, okay? I, I know, I know I'm repeating myself. I'm simply saying those are the building blocks of writing. It has, it, it's not the content. Remember, I said that earlier. It's not the content. It's the structure. How do I put it together? Not what, right? And so if you, if you learn that by the end of this course, you'll feel confident then with e each and every other paper that you do, right? Yes, I know. I'm, 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 I'm following a pattern here, right? And it is a pattern. Anyway, all right. On page eight, I'm almost done. Uh, you have the, the grade percentages, okay? So just a breakdown if you're not familiar with AutoBU. Every university is different in terms of how the grading works. So there's the grade percentages there. And then really the last thing, right? The last thing. I want to make it clear, right, that I'm not going to get to know you guys, okay? Not in the same way I would in a classroom. Nepotism, or, or, or I should say, not nepotism, this whole idea of any English in high school, if, you, if, if your teacher liked you in high school, chances are you did well. It doesn't work that way in university, okay? And I'm sure, I'm sure there's some of you right now who are smiling, thinking, thank God, all right? And you know exactly what I'm talking about. In university, right, and I'm showing you right here, there are very specific, okay, very specific expectations. And so, at the end of the course outline, I show you, okay, what is a D paper or an F? They usually almost fall into the same category. And then what is a C? What is a B? What is an A? And so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time explaining all those things, but take a look at them. The one thing I do want to explain, though, is take a look at what is an A paper. An A paper, okay, stands out. It is very, very clear, right, the, the grade that it, that it deserves. Your grammar is flawless, okay? A unique argument. Ideas, research, right? You and the, 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 the secondary sources, everything is beautifully married together, right? Documentation is flawless. In other words, in other words, an A paper is an A paper. I can't tell you how many times I've had students come to me who, who really were not strong writers and say, well, I deserve an A on this. Please don't do that. Instead, try and figure out how to get to that A, right? R rather than simply saying this deserves an A. So there is your rubric, if you will. I don't know why people are so hung up on that word rubric, all right? There it is, all right? So be aware of that too. Now, one last thing, and this is going to be maybe the harshest thing I will say throughout the entire course. This is not an ESL course, okay? It is not English Second, as a second language course. I am not trained to do that, to teach that. Neither is the TA. If we find that your English, right, still needs work, we will have to suggest to you that you drop the course. You will have to take more, maybe you'll have to take more English courses. But again, as I said, harshest thing I'm going to say, 
This is not an ESL course. We expect that your English, right, is at least at a certain level before we even begin. And so that means you have probably graduated high school, okay, with, you know, a couple of English, not, uh, not a couple of English courses, but I think maybe I won't even expand on that. I think you understand what I mean by that, right? That, that basically I'm not here to teach you the English language, right? That obviously there will be some aspects that I do, but it is expected that you are proficient in English before you begin this course. I don't know how, how clearer I can be on that. Right? Many students feel that they can circumvent their English requirement by passing a course like this. It, it won't happen. Now, I don't mean to scare you. Right? As I said, if you graduated from high school, right, you should be fine. But I'm not going to be teaching you English. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm making too much of that. It's simply not an ESL course. All right? Okay, so um, other than the last two minutes, <laughs> that went well. And uh, so, as I said, try not to anticipate too much. In other words, don't be sending me email, you know, down, you know, week five or week six or whatever. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. And I, I laid the course out so that, like I said, we begin slowly building blocks, right? And we put it all together as we go along. So, that is lecture one. And, um, yeah, I, I, I hope that I give you everything you need. Uh, but you do have our email addresses. So remember, which group are you in? Are you in DGD1? Well, then you send stuff to me. Are you in DGD2? Then you send stuff to the TA. All right. And for some reason, I feel I'm prolonging this now. So I think I'm ready to go. All right. So anyway, have a great rest of the day. Bye.